Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Mr. G. Martinez and this is your 8th grade science channel. Now let's take care of some of the boring stuff. Today we're going to cover the TICS 8.78 which is length of days and night. That's it. Now let's get to the cool stuff. There's a couple of technical things that we need to know before we proceed with the lesson. Like for example, we need to know what the axis is and the axis is this section right here that is pointing at north and south, kind of like an imaginary line. Here we have north on this side and south on this side. Notice that these two are a little bit different because one of them is a little bit tilted. The equator, the equator is this one over here in the middle. It's another imaginary line, but this one is pointing at our zero degrees. It's also located on this one over here. So that is the equator. The tilting of the planet is at 23.5 degrees and that is referring to this tilting of this axis. So it's actually moved 23.5 degrees. Right? It's not 50 it's degrees sign. The counterclockwise motion of the planet or rotation of the planet, the planet moves from left to right. That's the way it rotates. Or actually we can say it from west to east. All right, that is counterclockwise. And of course the last two, which is the northern and southern hemispheres. Everything above the equator is considered the northern hemispheres, which is those sections that I'm pointing at right now. Northern hemispheres. The southern hemisphere, everything that is below the equator, below the zero degrees, is considered the southern hemisphere. So now that we have done the technical things, let's get started with the lesson. First we need to know what causes the planet to have days and nights. In very simple terms, the rotation of the planet is the one responsible for everything, right? It's the one that creates days and night, and it's the one that causes a lot of things. So let's pay attention to this lesson. The rotation takes 24 hours to complete a cycle. The planet spins from left to right or west to east, counterclockwise, and that takes 24 hours to do a whole rotation. The rotations room from west to east, and once again, left, right, or counterclockwise. Keep this one in mind, because we're, we're going to mention this one a lot, right? Let me play the video so you can look at it. Notice how the movement is going from left to right. Okay? The lit area, this area that is getting sunlight, is what is going to be daytime. And all this area on the side that is under shadow is going to be nighttime. So all this is day. This section over here in the back is nighttime. What is the axis? Why is the axis so important? You're going to hear this a lot, so might, might as well pay attention. The axis is a vertical imaginary line running through the center of the planet, but it's also connecting the north and south poles. You can see the north pole over here on the top, south over here on the bottom, and you can see this uh, black line over here in the middle. So uh, in reality, that black line is not there. So that's why we say that it's an imaginary line. The axis is not straight, as you can see, it's tilted. If it was straight, it would be uh, something like this. But we know it's not, right? There's a little tilt. And that tilt is at 23.5 degrees. This tilting is the one that affects the length of days and nights in different areas of the planet. And we can see how this examples in this little picture that we have, how the sun never sets over here. Um, I guess we can say that in this section, since you never get any sunlight, I mean, you don't get any darkness, you're going to be under 24 hours daylight. Okay. Now, opposite to that, look at this bottom section which is on the south pole. Um, you can see that here, 
you're not going to get any sunlight for 24 hours. So this is going to be 24 hours nighttime. And here 24 hours daytime. Now notice that contrary to both of those, here the closer you get to the equator, the closer you're going to be to 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime, which we can say that this is equal amount of day and night. Let's discuss the length of days and nights. But let's take a look at this hypothetical example, how um, if the tilting of the planet didn't exist and we have kind of like a vertical line on the tilting or not tilting actually on the axis. If the axis of the planet was vertical, not tilted at 23.5 degrees, then the length of days will be, oh, we can see the examples right here. It didn't matter where you were. You can be here on the Arctic circles. You can be here on the South Pole, or you can be close to the equator. It didn't really matter. If we had the planet like this, it doesn't matter where you were. It will be 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime without regarding the position of where you were located in the planet. Okay, so to answer these questions, this will be 12 hours, 12 hours of uh, daylight and also 12 hours of uh, nighttime. Okay, unfortunately, due to the tilting, the length of days and nights, it's not exactly as this picture. It's a little bit different. Let's take a look at the length of days and nights. But now we're going to be talking specifically about the amount of hours. Now, this is July, right? If you think on that, it's going to be summertime for us, right? Let's take a look at what happens during summer. Notice the amount of hours over here. As you get close to the equator, which is the zero right here, this is the amount of when everything is going to be balanced. 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of nighttime. There you go. All right. But look what happens as you move from the equator towards the North Pole. Notice the amount of hours of daylight, how the amount of hours is actually increasing. Okay. From 12, 13 and a half, 15 hours. Uh, probably somewhere over here between those two lines will be, I don't know, I'm thinking probably about 20 hours. And then over here, 24. This is going to be uh, 24 hours daylight. You're not going to see any nighttime, as you can see over here in this field. Okay. But look what happens as you move from the equator down to south, to the south pole. Okay. Notice that the amount of hours of daylight is actually decreasing. From 12 hours, it went down to 10 and a half, 9 hours, and probably between these two white lines, I don't know, I'm thinking probably about 5 hours of daylight. And then over here, 0 hours, okay? Because there will be no daylight throughout this time. And this is actually going to last for a couple of months, about 3 months to be exact, okay? So let's answer a couple of the questions over here. We want to know the length of days in Venezuela, the length of days in southern Argentina, but also the length of nights in Canada, length of nights in the South Pole, length of days in the northern side of Alaska, the length of nights in Brownsville, Texas, hmm, I wonder where that is, and the length of nights in southern Australia. Even though Australia is not here located in this um, picture or map, uh, you can pretty much infer because Australia is way south, close to the South Pole, but on the other side of the planet. That's why we can't see it. Likewise, for Siberia, which is in Russia, it will be very close to the North Pole, but um, on the other side of the planet, which is why we don't have it on this side of the map. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple minutes and think about it. I want you to do this thing though. I want you to give me amount of hours. 
and it will be very easy to guess the day daylight hours because they're marked over here but some of them as you can see you need to know the amount of hours of night time okay so let's do a couple of them length of days in venezuela venezuela is right here in this section night time it's 24 hours daylight so you see it can be a little complicated if you think about it now let's take a look at the other side of the coin see now we're talking about once again amount of hours but this is january now okay again we want to see venezuela southern argentina canada south pole north alaska brownsville texas southern australia and siberia okay but just make sure you pay attention to amount of days i mean length of days or length of nights okay and of course make sure you give me the amount of hours right so venezuela is right here of night time okay so that's pretty much it let's see what we have learned today Today we learned that day and nights are caused by the counterclockwise rotation of the planet on its axis. A complete rotation of the planet takes 24 hours. The equator and the axis are imaginary lines. The equator is a horizontal line. The axis is a vertical line connecting the poles. The axis is tilted 23.5 degrees and the tilt of the axis causes our planet to have different amount of hours of day and nights in different locations of the planet. The planet is actually divided into northern and southern hemispheres. Okay, so thanks for watching. This is everything that we have for today. Okay, this is Mr. G. Martinez, and this is your 8th grade science channel, your favorite channel. So please subscribe. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.